Hey everyone, today I have a brand new case to have a look at. And this is a case from MSY, uh, which is an Australian computer retailer. Uh, I used to review cheap cases and stuff on OCAU. I'll just start again with just doing ones on YouTube, so. Now, I like cheap cases. Uh, cheap computer cases are just a thing for me. Uh, I used to buy the Shaw ones, uh, A-Power, Ritmo back in the day. Um, and anyways, I checked MSY's website last night, and this was here for $35, and we had one picture, and that was just the picture of the front of the case. Yeah, let's jump right into it. So, here we have the box it comes in. It's not that big of a box, but I don't think this is a big case anyways. So it's a full ATX with large tinted transparent side window, black coated interior for improved durability. I don't know what in, okay. Uh, USB 3 and USB 2 ports in front for easy access. I'm not sure if it's going to be actually USB 3 or if it's just going to be USB 2 with a header. Who knows? Uh, HD audio ready with hidden cable management. Uh, USB 3, HD audio, cable management, extreme cooling, uh, support up to 335mm graphics cards. So we'll have to check that. Uh, See-through side panel, black coated chassis structure, and support up to five fans, fan not included, which is going to be a little bit of a disappointment for a case like this. Moving on to the side, uh, the cross weight is 4.8 kilograms, 470 by 200 by 445, so that's that's okay. Uh, the recommendation is I'm getting Voltron, which is uh, not ripping off any names there. I'm getting the ultimate Game Gear, Black Red, all that stuff. So. That's what I should have started the video with. Now, if you can see here, it says all the features and specifications. Uh, the steel structure is 0.45 millimeters SPCC. Uh, it has one five and a quarter inch drive bay, two SSDs, and two 3.5 inch hard drive mounts. Uh, and there is five 120 millimeter fans. So, well, you can we can put 520 millimeter fans in there. Uh, there's ventilation holes on the PCI and power supply slots. So, uh, okay, great. And the other side is completely plain, just the logo there. Enough chit chat, let's open the case and see what's inside. Bring the case out of the box, we have two styrofoam packets and a plastic bag protecting it. All right. So here is the Armageddon Decatron T3Z with a heap of plastic on it. So we'll take all these plastic bits off. This is actually looking better than I thought. Outside we have just a single power button, the reset buttons with the I.O. And there's actually these nice little ventilation grills, so that's cool. There's the logo branded on there, which is a nice touch, I must admit. Swing around the back, cut out for your I.O. 120mm fan mount, 7 PCI brackets with one open, because that's probably where your graphics card is going to be, and your pass per location. So overall, it's looking quite good. Plastic is already a fingerprint magnet. But it, it looks alright, I mean, that profile there, that looks pretty good for a $35 case, I will say. So just having a look at the front I.O., we have one USB 2 port, headphone, microphone, and USB 3 slash 2, and a power button, reset button, and hard drive activity, and power LEDs. And the top has this nice red line there, and it also has this ventilation just here, which looks pretty cool. Something like Aerocool would use this, but uh, there you go, it's there, but it's all plastic. And on the bottom we have four rubber feet, which are housed up. So if you have your case on a table, it would be raised up ever so slightly, and it's good for the ventilation for the power supply as well. And also, the dust filter is removable, and it's on these little tracks. So just here is also the Decatron logo, which looks very nice on the side window. Let's go ahead and open the up. Quite sturdy case panel, not much flex to it. There's also some scratches that I got in my one. Um, probably, hopefully, won't be in your one, but uh, yeah, I've got some scratches there and I've just smudged it. Okay, so this is the inside of the case and straight away, here's something that you don't see much on a $35 case. And that is the fact that all the cables are all entirely black. So you don't have to worry about multicolored bonds and cheap cases. This has you covered, which is quite amazing actually. The drive bay covers are very flexy, but they're not too bad. I have a 2.5 SSD mount there and another SSD mount there with appropriate holes. There is a lot of cable management holes on this 
case. There's one at the bottom here, and also get the accessories. There's just some screws and a speaker and a expansion bracket. That's fine. Uh, you have plenty of camera management holes, so you can route whatever the hell you want to route through there. There's also at the top, there's some camera management holes up there to run your 8-pin or 4-pin power cable through. Very neat inside, and I'm pretty sure that you can make a decent build utilizing these, especially these ones here, because that's where your cables for your USB ports and stuff are going to come through, and that is quite appropriate to have them there. Graphics card is quite on the mark at about 350. It's probably a little bit less, but yeah, 345 would be about appropriate. Should be able to accommodate CPU coolers in here of up to about 190 millimeters. Coming around the back here, you can see that there's plenty of cable tie downs for all your cables and stuff, and you can see the extra uh, hole there for the four pin. Big CPU cutout, which is awesome. There's the holes for the SSD mount. So two SSDs, two three and a half inch hard drives, which is pretty good. There you can see drive bays are a little tacky, but they're okay. And because of the side window and how much space and clearance there is, I would say camera management should get you about two centimeters of room. So that's a decent amount to work with. And at the front of the case here, we have room to put a 120 millimeter fan, but you can put a five and a quarter inch drive there. Uh, you can't put one there because of the plastic shroud, but you may be able to put a, um, a little five and a quarter inch to three and a half inch or 2.5 if you want to uh, expand the storage or anything like that. Now take the front panel of the case off, simply pull at the bottom and out it comes. And it's just one single piece. If you've built a system, you don't have to take this part off and have to worry about cable management, which is excellent. So really liking that. Now here's where you can put two 120 mil fans. If you're creative, you could probably put a radiator here if you wanted to for your video card. The drive cage is riveted, uh, so it would be a little bit difficult screwing these in, because if you put them in there, the fans there, it's gonna be a little bit hard to screw them in, but I'm sure you could probably figure that out. Just up there is the USB 3, USB 2, the power connector's just there. So let's go ahead and take the next plastic panel off. The final plastic piece is off. Uh, which has all the components on it and everything like that. So if you ever need to install what I'm about to show you, you'll have to rip this off. I think the best part for this case is the fact that it has dual 120mm fan mounts. So you can also put a radiator here for your CPU. And it should fit. Because of the way the top panel is designed, this here will pretty much hit that straight away. It has ventilation to pull through. But this will actually hit that. So while starting to assemble the PC, I've kind of ran into a problem already. I've installed two 120s at the top here. So you can see, that's no space there. But here's the mounting points, just here and here, for an ATX motherboard, which leaves absolutely no room for a 120mm radiator or a 240mm. Uh, so that's a bit of a downfall for me. Here's the stealth bay cover as well, so as you can see it just pops out like that, so you put a five and a quarter inch drive bay in there and it's stealthed, which is really awesome because most cases these days don't come with five and a quarter inch drive bays, whereas this one does, and it's stealthed, so you can still have that sort of modern looking computer, you can also have that there, if you still want to use optical drives, I still do. So while in the middle of building this to demonstrate what it looks like, I've ran into a problem with the five and a quarter inch drive bay. Now, it seems like it's there and it is in place. However, just here, it's hitting the capacitors. So if you're installing a full ATX board in here, it's gonna hit either the RAM or capacitors and the front panel's actually not going on properly. It's sort of half on and half off. And I forgot to mention just here where the power supply goes. Yeah, so power supplies up to 200 millimeters can fit in there quite easily, so that's really, really good. There's no little foam grommets to keep the power supply nice and quiet, but I'm pretty sure that's not an issue. You just get some foam adhesive and put it there and you should be fine. And you can pick this up today. Uh, there's a number of sites you can pick this up on, but I got it from MSY and yeah, it's kind of out of stock now from where I bought it from. I'm getting is a Malaysian company, I believe. They make some pretty nice looking cases and considering that I've looked at this, not only does it feel quite solid, I mean, I will say, the Coolmaster cases that are around 
the $60 price tag that do come with PS series, they aren't quite as solid as this. This does feel quite solid and feels like it would house a decent build. For a cheap case, it does a job. As I thought, the top of the computer doesn't support a 240mm RAD. However, if you're creative enough, there is ample space here to install a 240mm RAD, so that would be an option if you were to consider that. Mounting the fans was pretty easy. Everything went in pretty seamlessly. Uh, the front fan down the bottom, I did have to use a long screwdriver to actually screw in the uh, screws for the fan, but all in all, it worked. And that's what the front looks like just with some fans installed. So yeah, you can install them, but if you see here, you can actually put another fan there if you really wanted to. It's only gonna hold on to just here, but I think you could possibly maybe put a 360 in there. So after reviewing this case and having a look at it, I'm not impressed, but at the same time, I am kind of impressed with decals and the red sort of accents are very, very nice and it does add to the build. Overall, I'd give this case about a six out of 10 because it does have its flaws and its downfalls. But overall, I would, I would recommend it to someone who wanted to just get something cheap to just throw together. Disadvantages being that you cannot put a 240 mil rat up the top. There's no front dust filter. Um, there's no power supply shroud, but that really doesn't matter. A bit awkward to install an optical drive if you're installing a full ATX board. Cabling's a little bit off if you're installing an ATX board. Um, otherwise, there's not much else to really say. So thank you very much for watching this review of the Armageddon Decatron T3Z case. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you want to. You don't have to. You can subscribe if you want. You don't have to, etc., etc. Um, I'll hopefully be doing more uh, case reviews in the future. Uh, but I just thought this one was a, was a start, and um, I think it's much easier doing videos than having to write a big text post of a review. Although video editing is a little bit iffy. Anyways, enough of that. Thanks for watching. See you later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Comment below if you would like to see more content like this. We'll see you in the next one.